Example 7 is one example with no numbers at all, if you realize. Okay, given that fx and gx both have the same remainder when divided by x minus h. Express h in terms of a, b, p, and q. Okay, so mm, how do you even get started? So we have fx and we have gx. We have basically two um, expression here, quadratic expression. So we know that they have the same remainder when divided by x minus h. So to find the remainder when fx is divided by x minus h, we have to substitute in x equals to h, isn't it? So when you substitute in x equals to h, this is what we end up with. h squared plus ah plus b. So this is the remainder, right, when fx is divided by this. Okay, now same thing we do for g. Okay, the function g. So we put it in, we'll have h squared minus ph minus q. Alright, so this is also the remainder when the gx is divided by x minus h. So what do we know about this remainder? Well, we know that these two remainder are the same. Here we go, we're the same. Okay, so what this means is h squared plus ah plus b is the same as h squared minus h uh, ph minus q. Right? So, what are we supposed to do next? Well, we're supposed to express h in terms of a, b, p, and q, which simply means that we have to make a, um, h the subject. Okay, so we're going to make h the subject. So we see that this is h square here and this h square here. Bring over, we'll cancel each other. Okay, so we'll throw all the things, all the items, all the terms with um, h over to one side. Okay, so ah plus ph will be equal to minus q minus b. So we'll take out our h as a common factor. And this will leave us with a plus p as part of a product at the left hand side. So H will then now become minus P minus Q divided by A plus P. So this is how we will manage to make H the subject, make H in terms of P, Q, A and B.